Hello everyone, welcome back to Deep Dive, episode number nine. Today I'd like to talk about shaping melodies. This is one of my favorite things to think about, and um, by the time I get to do this, it probably means I know all the notes, and um, it's time for that creative process to take place and ask myself, what do these notes mean? So I don't think there's just one right way of playing certain melodies. There are many different ways um, that could illuminate the beauty of different melodies. So what questions do I ask myself and how do I arrive at my ultimate um, rendition of that melody for the audience? Let's explore together. Unlike my other deep dives where I go through many different examples, today I'd like to focus on just one piece, actually 12 measures to be exact, this is the beginning of the 18th variation in the piece uh, Rhapsody on the Theme by Paganini by Rachmaninoff. comes in reinstating that melody that I just played by myself and I become a bit like a accompanimental figure and together we build um, the melody to new heights it gets repeated uh, once more in a higher register in a bigger dynamic and that really is a very climactic moment of this entire piece I really look forward to it um, every time I get there. So this is a special moment, but I think the beginning really is important because um, it's when piano's playing alone, everything's hushed. And um, when you see this transformation from the original melody, so he flips it upside down, becomes, and then becomes major. And then he takes it up to a new key. So this transformation in itself, in this variation setting, is extraordinary. But I think um, this melody really takes on a new life. So um, let's look at these first 12 measures. When analyzing something, I think it's important to divide them up in sections and really compare how different sections compare with each other. In these 12 measures, uh, I see three different sections. The first is this. So the beginning remarks, that gets repeated twice. And I like to play the second one a little bit more. Uh, because there is an additional note um, that really makes the second one a little bit more important in my mind. So first one is and second one goes this the first note that sort of travels a step higher that sort of upbeat that brings us to the same melody I think it's, um, it's a message from Rachmaninoff saying, I do want to emphasize the second statement a little bit more. So um, after... Sections two and three go through 
for many harmonic changes and it grows in dynamics. There's a crescendo, a couple measures into section two, and, um, and then it grows to forte, and I taper a little bit before the orchestra comes in. So let's play it. They go um, up a step um, following circle of fifths, but I think what's important to notice is um, the tension growing with, um, with this step up in the section two. In section three, um, the sequence gets a bit broken and we get surprised by this chord. <laughs> because um, if we were just following the sequence, we would have We would just keep going up the, up the keyboard, but it gets interrupted by melody um, and there is um, section three has a lot of tension here all these um, uh, clashing chords only two it resolves at the end of it sort of nicely and there is a little dim coming down to um, mezzo forte and I just set the tone, I sweeten the end of the phrase for the orchestra to come in. So that's the approximate um, landscape of the melody. And I think that's um, the very first thing I do when I see um, a melody and starting to shape something. So uh, divide it into different sections and really compare it with each other. I map out these three sections to learn the lowest point and the highest points of the melody. I think it's important to know where the energy drops the most, which in this case, after doing that work, it's in the beginning of the second phrase. When things start changing, that's the very beginning, written piano right before Rachmaninoff writes crescendo. And um, it builds, 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 and the highest point of this um, phrase uh, is this melody is... breaks from the tension to the resolution in order um, for the orchestra to come in. It's sort of an invitation from the pianist. Um, after all this tension rising, I, I do this gesture like come join me on the journey and then the orchestra comes in. Now that we figured out the big picture, let's dive in and analyze the little details in order to illuminate this landscape. So I think one of the most important things to consider uh, is this figure here, which really makes this melody. It's, it's really the nucleus of this melody. It's one, two, three, four, 16th notes, followed by a long note. So there's five notes here, one, two, three, four, five. And first four are written the same length. But um, if you hear different recordings, uh, you would notice that every, uh, people tend to lean on the first note. Lean on this one and then two, three, four kind of rushes forward and then we lean on the fifth one. So what ends up happening is instead of they become um, unequal because of the rubato that um, people like to insert there. 
and that is a talking point that pianists have with different conductors. I definitely play it a little bit differently um, depending on who I play with because different conductors uh, have uh, strong opinions as to whether they should be pretty equal or it's really a two note phrase like like and because the orchestra um, reinstates what I say first we kind of have to be on the same page uh, and play this melody in a similar way so we are um, we seem like the same entity Having that rubato aside um, of these four 16th notes, I think it's important to think about um, whether the fourth 16th notes crescendo into the long notes or go away from it. So this is the two note phrase lesson all over again, but um, you have to ask yourself whether Rachmaninoff meant going to the, going to the D flat or leaning on the beginning, stepping away from it. Uh, and in my opinion, he's definitely going into the D flat to the last note because this is written as an upbeat. And then you have that plushness of the left hand bass meeting you at the end of it. So after much thought, I've decided I'm gonna make a little crescendo into the long notes, but um, next thing to think about is really how to play the long note so there's no accent on them. That's very important. When you emphasize something, it's really easy to uh, play it with more force, which puts an accent on it, but this is a kind of um, more a leaning sound. So it's important to not just play the four notes, then the long note, but play just one before. Just the last one, and then... So that last movement is very natural for your hand, so you don't, you don't come down on the long notes um, with force. Next little detail I like to think about are the inner voices. Rachmaninoff is notorious for writing not just melody and accompaniment, but there is something in between them that um, is so interesting that really illuminates the main melody and gives it um, extra emotional content. In section two, we have... I'm just gonna play the melody for you. try it with the inner voices. because the melody is beautiful by itself. But uh, when there is uh, this beautiful inner line going on, you have to ask yourself, why did Rachmaninoff add it there? Why is it there? And what function does it play? And I think uh, when the melody, when the tension is rising with this melody, is wanting to go ahead and you know and get to the very dramatic climactic point of this section but because of this it's like the hand that's pulling it back there is a conflict between the voice that wants to move ahead and then the voice that says oh maybe now is not the time so there is that that conflict between and i think this inner voice adds some kind of emotional content that um that creates extra energy and um, interesting colors to this section
I think it's important to think about how these 12 measures compare with the rest of the variation. So this is the first time everyone hears this melody and it's very intimate, it's very soft and piano is alone without the orchestra. And after these 12 measures, orchestra comes in um, singing this melody sweetly. It's mezzo forte, but in my opinion, uh, it shouldn't be so grand just yet. It's very hard to do because it's such a gratifying melody that everyone wants to vibrate and really play their hearts out as soon as <laughs> it's, it's their turn to play. But I plead with the conductor and the orchestra to keep the energy low um, so we have somewhere to grow into because I think the climactic point of this variation is when it returns for the third time. So I think it's the end of the melody that um, changes each time it returns. When I do it for the first time, I taper. And when the orchestra and pianist does it together the second time, it does not taper. It goes even larger. We grow in energy. So um, when it comes back for the third time, it is um, really grand. So here, the, when I do it, But at the end of the second time, I have... Of course, I make this big, grand crescendo to fortissimo, and orchestra has... time. So I think that's how um, Rachmaninoff is, is able to really reinstate it three times without making us feel like it's just a repetition. Each time it really grows in, in power and exponential power and we get to really experience the height of its melody when it's said for the third time. So here are all the ways I think of a melody when I'm learning them, trying to get to know them and internalize them. So first I look at the big picture. I divide up the melody so there are different sections in my mind, compare them with each other. And when I have an approximate landscape of the melody, I look at it closely with the microscope, really get into that smallest detail, work out all the little elements that make this melody what it is, and I patch them all back together. And the last step is really to look at where this melody lives on um, the entire piece. So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope um, you really take a good look at the next melody that you are learning or listening to and think of all the ways that it can be. Thanks for joining me. See you next time on, on Deep Dive.